Power armor, explosions, great music, and of course, settlement mods. Welcome to episode 9 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. Power armor is very cool in Fallout 4, but not everybody likes to use it, at least not all the time. But occasionally you will come across a situation where you just think to yourself, I really could do with my power armor now. What in the hell is that? Well, there is a mod that will allow you to actually call it to you. You need to craft something called a power armor relay beacon, and it's a reasonably expensive item with regards uh, the, the stuff it needs, nuclear material being probably the hardest to come by, followed by gold. But you're going to need one of these, and this item will appear in your pit boy inventory under the aid section. And you can use it right from there. I'm actually going to hotkey it so I can show you a little more spectacularly. And when I use it, it will summon the last power armor that I was wearing and teleport it right in front of me. It's actually a very cool idea. It could be useful to some people, but in my opinion, it's not as useful as the next mod. The next mod is called Power Armor Autopilot, and it allows you to add an AI unit to up to three of your power armors. You just walk up to the power armor, open the inventory as if you were adding a fusion core or a new item, and if you have crafted a Power Armor AI module, you will be able to add it to the Power Armor. It will then ask you which slot you wish to use. I'm going to choose slot A for this Power Armor. And when I exit the menu, I now have a Power Armor unit that will actually follow me round as a companion. At least, it's supposed to. <laughs> I haven't got far enough away. It will, it will actually sneak when you sneak and it will fight if you fight. If you get into combat, it will start punching things. Have a death claw. And you'll see the power armor starts punching the death claw. Now, be warned, although the power armor is very tough, it can be destroyed. And you will not be able to get the power armor back if it gets destroyed. I mentioned you could have up to three of these. I'm going to put a second module in a slot B. And you can actually have a small army of power armored robots running around thumping things for you. They can carry some things. So if I go along and command and trade, I can actually tell it to carry an awful lot of things for me, which can be useful. However, there are some limits. You can't give them absolutely everything. I did notice when I went into combat, they would not actually draw their weapons. They carried on punching whatever we were in uh, combat with. But as you can imagine, having three of these along with you would really help carrying a lot of junk. As I mentioned, you craft the AI module at the chemistry station. It does require a lot of circuitry. But you can also craft these grenades that will allow you to summon the power armor, to have it delivered. You can even have one that will deliver all of these suits. And this is useful because you can command all of these power armor units to basically wander around. I need to get this one. Command this one to go here and tell him to stay. I can then throw a grenade. Flare will go up. And your power armor comes flying out of the sky. Now, I think that effect is much better than uh, the other mods delivery system. I think that is very cool. Once the flare goes up, the power armor disappears and then comes... F oh! No power slam! Ah, well. Maybe it doesn't always power slam. 
You can summon all three with a single grenade, but as you noticed, these grenades are going to require circuitry again, and that is something that's not always that easy to find. The mod author is intending to change a few things once the GEC comes out. He's hoping to have a vertebrate delivery system, although I really do quite like the power slam power armor, but perhaps it would be nice if you actually saw a vertebrate land, pick the armor up, and then a vertebrate appear in the sky and the power armor jumped out of it to power slam at your feet. As long as the power armor has not been destroyed, you can actually reverse the process by going into the trade menu and removing the power armor AI module. If you do that, the power armor is then once more basic power armor. But don't worry if you've got a lot of gear stored on your power armor robot. If you remove the I'll have to find it. If you remove the Power Armor AI module with all of the gear still inside and then exit, you'll see I am suddenly carrying too much and cannot run as all of the junk was once more added to my inventory. I think really the only thing that's missing is an option to be able to just talk to them and send them back to wherever you summoned them from. If you could send them back, especially loaded with gear, they would become ridiculously useful. Uh, I might even start abusing them. You would need a lot of circuitry, but I could imagine summoning them, loading them with junk, and then just commanding them to go back to Sanctuary so I could pick the junk up later. Great idea for a mod, really well done, and I'm surprised it hasn't actually had a lot more attention. Are you bothered by the fact that you don't get any radiation from your own mini nuke explosions, that you don't get that satisfying radioactive glow from the destruction that you've caused. Well, with a mod called Fat Man Radiation Hazard, you can do just that. You can hang around in the fallout of your own battles, basking in the radiation that it created. That's it, really. Uh, if you stand in an area that you have hit with a mini nuke, or anyone else has hit with a mini nuke for that matter, you will get some radiation damage. So, if you're going to run around shooting things with the fat man, you might want to make sure you have got some protection. It lasts for about 30 seconds, and it's not totally overpowering. If you run through it for a few seconds, you're not going to die. But if you hang around in it, for any length of time, you're going to need a little rad away. The next mod is a radio station mod called 50s Irish Radio, and it changes the sort of music you get from the castle's Freedom Radio to some, well, 50s style Irish tracks. It doesn't change the DJ or any of the warnings you get from Freedom Radio, but it just adds these, well, quite cool songs. It's strange, but I found this music suited the game a little. I don't know if there's a large Irish community in Boston, but for some reason I found a lot of these songs to be, well, just strangely appropriate. And if you're wondering, does this music come out of the speakers in the castle? Yes, it does. So if you're looking for something that adds a little more, well, upbeat music to that particular location or to the Freedom Radio channel, this is one you might want to take a look at. Well, it's all the gentleman soldier as a sentry he does stand. Last week, I did briefly mention yet another settlement building mod from DD Productions, a mod that adds fusion reactors and solar panels to the game. And I thought I'd quickly show you that mod in action right now. It adds solar panels, huge surprise, and you wire them up pretty much as you do any generator. And all of a sudden, there you go, I've got power to all of these things. You can actually switch it on and off and it's very cool animation kicks in and it will switch off. 
And if you need more power than one solar panel can actually generate, don't worry, you can of course stack them together. They snap very nicely together. You can turn them different angles if you want or have them placed side by side. You wire them from behind like so and all of a sudden more power. The great thing with the solar panels is that you don't actually have to have one large farm of them. You could, of course, place them on roofs and use them to power the building or nearby objects. And of course, they are completely silent when compared to generators. The downside to them is that they do require makeshift batteries, something I've not really found an awful lot of. So uh, you may actually only be able to build a few of these. However, the mod author has promised he will be adding a makeshift battery recipe to the mod sometime soon, and you'll be able to craft it at the workbench. This is going to mean that these solar panels do require quite a lot of materials, and you are going to require rank 3 in science. But if you're looking for a quiet solution to your power needs, this is definitely a good option. But if you need a power source with a little more oomph, check this baby out. The fusion reactor, which unfortunately does require four fusion cores, but it produces a whopping great 50 power. You wire it up pretty much the same way, and you will have enough power from one of these units to probably power most settlements. Two of them should cover everything. And of course, it does look very cool. However, uh, be, be warned, the things are a little volatile and... If it weren't for God mode, I would now be in quite a lot of trouble. So my advice to you is going to be use some walls, build some structure around this, perhaps even concrete walls, if you don't want to blow your settlements sky high. They do snap to each other very nicely indeed, but you cannot stack them vertically, and there is a reason for that. They're actually wired from the top. If you check the wires out, they're actually wired across the top. I think I've got all of these wired together now. Let's just wire those and wire to there. These power sources are silent like the solar panels, but again, because of the explosive nature of these devices, they're probably not something you want to stick on the roof of your settlement buildings. There is now a single file download for DD Productions that contains all of his mods in one ESP. So if you use a lot of his mods, you may be interested in this one. Just be aware that if you replace a lot of his other mods with this one mega mod, you will lose all of the items in game in your existing settlements because they are associated with those old ESPs. You will still have the items in your menu, you will be able to rebuild them, but any that you have placed will just disappear and you won't get the resources back, I'm afraid. So there is a downside if you wish to switch. However, if you are starting out in the settlement building and you want to use DD Productions mods, and you probably do, this mod is probably the way to go. And finally, the DD Productions mod that may have made me hate him. Now, if you have not played the game very far, uh, or you've just not found the castle, you may want to skip this mod. I, I will leave a link to skip to the end now, because it will contain spoilers, I'm afraid. So, be warned. So, if, like me, you found the castle, and you spent several hours repairing the wall with the concrete foundations, and you're massively proud of all that time that you spent getting them aligned and, you know, placed neatly, looking cool and looking great. And this was before DD Productions had put the stackable concrete blocks, you know, back when you had to do this all by hand. If you'd spent all that time recreating this wall, then I'm afraid, well, this mod, it, it's going to crush your soul. 
With a mod called Craftable Castle Walls Repaired, under the special section you will find two craftable pieces. One for the south wall fix, and it takes a couple of seconds to get it to click into place, but not that long. And a piece for the northwest castle wall as well. And that's it. Two pieces, and you're done. You've got an almost perfect fitting wall with a doorway through to this side and the walls up there and here are fixed perfectly. It looks great and it took almost no time whatsoever to make. There's no clipping in the armory and in general, it will make anyone who spent many, many hours repairing this place cry a little. And that is all we have time for this week. However, before I leave you, I would like to leave you with a bit of a message and a request. In my Skyrim Mod Sanctuary series, I used to end with screenshots posted by you, the viewers. And I want to reintroduce this to this series, to the Fallout Mod Vault series. And I'm going to be setting up a page where you can post those images. I will be making a video, I will link it here. It will show you how to do that, where you can actually post these images if you want me to use some of your screenshots at the ends of my videos. So, Follow that link if you're interested, and I'd love to see the sort of things that you guys can create. I will, of course, be back next week showing you some more great mods, and I would love it if you could join me for that video. I look forward to seeing you there, and until then, remember, as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.